Do we live with a biblical worldview? What is your worldview? What is shaping it? What is making it what it is today? And what is meant by this term worldview? What it means is the lens, the filter, the, the big picture through which we see everything that goes on around us. How we look at life, the way we see the world, your standpoint, your way of thinking, your wavelength that you're on, your viewpoint. And the worldview that you adopt will ultimately affect the decisions you make, what defines you and identifies you as a person. Someone defined a worldview as this. It's a comprehensive view of life through which we think, understand and judge and which determines our approach to life, meaning and decision making. It's how you filter everything. People today, you've got a filter, you've got a lens. Our thinking affects our lifestyle which affects our environment. If we get the thinking right, if we have a biblical mindset, a biblical worldview, it's going to affect our lifestyle, it's going to affect our environment. It's your life view, how you understand life and make sense of it all. And questions that show our worldview are questions like this. What are we? Where did we come from? It's talking about creation. What has gone wrong with the world? It's called sin. What can we do to fix it? It's redemption. That's the answer for the world that we live in. It's not go out and buy solar panels. It's how we can fix the world. It's what Christ has done. It's redemption. That's a biblical worldview. Your answers to these questions too. Is there a God? And what is he like? What is the origin of the universe? What is the nature and origin of man? What happens to man when he dies? Where does knowledge come from? Who decides? Who decides what is right and wrong? What is the meaning of human history? These are all questions that will help us determine what is our world view. Is it a biblical one? Your world view matters. Your view about God, of truth, of ethics, of humanity, of evil. What is it that's shaping our thinking? Where do we get our world view from? And it's secular culture by and large that is affecting us. The world world view. The secular worldview is impacting us and our kids. The world that we live in, full of scepticism, sometimes indifference, they don't, don't care less about the things of God, or there's a complete rejection in some quarters of moral absolutes. Is it the Philistines and the Canaanites that are raising our children for us? It's a good question, isn't it? We're sending off our children where the Canaanites and the Philistines are raising them in the secular school systems. And, of course, I was raised in the secular school system, and uh, thank God he helped me. Uh, but we know it's increasingly anti-God. It's increasingly godless, the secular schooling system. The influence of ungodly media, of entertainment, they're brainwashing, they're affecting, they're conditioning, they're fighting for the control of the hearts and minds of young people of our world today. There's a battle on for the mind. It's about the world view. In Colossians 2.8, Beware lest any man spoil you. It's got the sense of take you prisoner through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of man, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Look out. There's people trying to take you prisoner by the philosophies, by the deceit, by tradition of man. The ways of the world. It's a warfare, people, today. And whenever we make a decision, it's based on our current world view. Is it worldly philosophy that dictates your choices about what you think, about your opinions, about what is right and wrong? Or is it Christ who guides you? Shouldn't it be Christ? Shouldn't it be Christ? It has to be Christ. Your worldview matters. It determines the way that you think, the way that you think about things like Life choices about death, about family, about money, about government, about education, about how you live out your faith. We must, you must, have a biblical worldview. It's essential. And after making that choice to follow Christ as your saviour, the most important decision that you'll ever make, then there's choices about how you live out your faith. How will my faith in Christ shape my life? How will it inform my thinking? How shall I live? Proverbs 23, 7 says, As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. 
Our thinking and our heart, our belief system affects our behaving. And our worldviews have a tremendous influence on our behaviour. Is our worldview worldly strongholds? Other those strongholds, we you know when we witness to people, there's strongholds there in their minds. There's, there's some lovely unsafe people that I rub shoulders with, that I come into contact with. They're garrisoned within a fortress, within a stronghold of their belief system, of their unbelief system. Are we held captive by our imaginations, by every high thing that exalteth itself? We think of some unsaved who are full of pride and boasting and vanity. Ego is their God. These are those who we need to seek that they find that obedience of Christ, that they come and bow their heart, bow their knee to Christ and surrender. And people, we're going to look at four key areas together about our worldview and what it means to have a biblical worldview. This is an important message about God, about truth, about life and about sin.